Hello and welcome to this new lecture. In this lecture, we're going to talk about events and parts. An event is a logical link to a sample contained in the pool. In this case, if we look at the 8BD09, we can see that it has been used eight times. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight right here. The same goes for all the rest of the samples we have imported into our project. So any event is a logical link to an audio sample. If I double click on an event in the lower zone of the display window, I will see the audio editor and this is the window. But we will talk about the audio editor later on in a dedicated lecture. So let me close the window and you can also recognize an event because if I move the handle in the beginning, in the middle or at the end of the sample, I can set the fade in, the volume and the fade out for that sample. Let me now solo it and let me press P to move the locators to the selection and let's play Cubase to understand what the fade in and fade out are. Okay, cool. You can also modify those values from the info line and if you can't see that, you have to activate it from the setup window layout, like this. And as you can see here, we have the fade in, the fade out, and the volume as well. Now let me show you another trick. If I want to reset some values in Cubase, all I need to do is click the Control command key and click over a value, a fader or wherever I need. So let me now reset, for example, the volume. There we go. But bringing back the attention to our topic, an event is a logical link to a sample contained in the pool and has the handles to manage fade in, fade out and the volume, okay? So let's now talk about parts. And let me create a part which basically is an event container. So let me select the glue tool and with the glue tool selected, let me click right here multiple times. Okay, we have glued several events into a so-called part. If I now use the object selection tool and I double click over my part, the part editor will open. As you can see, all the events are contained within the part itself. And if I move the left locator, you can see that it has moved also on the ruler here. But for instance, I can use an independent zoom so I can have a whole view of our events contained within the part. You can see the beginning and the end of the part that are shown right here. So let me close the event editor for a while and now let me resize the end of the part by moving this handle on the bottom right as I want the part to be exactly two bars long. Now let me press P to set the locators accordingly. So let's do the same with the open glue tool and there we go. Again, let me trim the beginning and the end of the part. And let's do it again with the clap as well. Now, I'm happy that this has happened because, as you can see, the length is now exceeding the two bars. So it's a good idea to cut the exceeding part and bring it to the beginning of our loop like this. Now I can glue the tail of the part to the rest. The same goes for the clap too. 
I'm gonna move it to the beginning and I'm gonna use the Clio tool. Now for the rest of our closed samples, I can select them all at once and click only once to glue them all. Let me just enlarge the closed because we can have a problem here. As you can see, the part is a little bit exceeding our two bars loop, so I can trim its end right here. And you might say, why aren't you moving the tail to the beginning of the loop as done before? You are right, but in this case I don't care and I just move forward. We are talking about a tiny portion of the audio, so I just don't care about. And as already said in a previous lecture, the loop is a little bit longer than our two bars groove, so I'm gonna cut it as I will use only the first part of the groove. Okay, I'm gonna select and delete all the exceeding audio by pressing cancel on my keyboard. So we have just transformed all our events into parts. Why do I do that? Well, because it's easier to copy them throughout the display window. In this case, if I press Ctrl Command D, I can obtain a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 bars groove, which is our starting point for the rest of the course. So if I press Ctrl Command A to select all, and I press P on my keyboard to position the locators, remove the solo here. Enter to play and let's listen to our 8 bars groove. As you can hear, the audio hasn't changed. What we have changed is the form of the events in our display window. We have transformed single audio events into parts that we can easily manage even when using a very high zoom because we know that each part starts and exactly ends in grid. That's very important, okay? So, time to go ahead now.